Welcome back to another Blender tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to make realistic fire in Blender without going too crazy on the computation. So these are going to be some settings that will allow most people with an average computer to get relatively nice results and not push things too high. So I'll quickly show you the blend file. This is it over here. Um, some really simple things we're going to be setting up to create a fire and it is a bit laggy in the viewport here but you can get the idea here. It's very simple and then we're going to jump into the shading workspace just set up a very simple little um, shader here for our volumetrics to create this nice looking fire so this is pretty beginner friendly and hopefully something that you can do on most computers so let's jump in and make realistic fire in blender so the new scene open up in blender let's select also default objects press delete and we're going to go shift a we're going to go to our mesh options add in a uv sphere you can use all sorts of objects but i think a uv sphere um, works really well for this you can go ahead and right click and shade smooth if you want so now what we're going to do is we're going to press f3 with the sphere selected and you're going to see this little box pop up and you're going to type in quick and you're going to click on the option here for quick smoke then what you're going to do is you're going to grab the box and you're going to go G, Z, move it up a little bit closer to the sphere and you can actually scale it by pressing S. I want to make it a little bit taller, like so, giving us a bit more space because the flame is going to be going um, upwards. Now we're going to select the sphere. We're going to go over to our physics. Over here you can see it's added a fluid and yes, smoke is handled like a fluid in many simulation systems. So we're going to go here to the flow type and we're going to change it from smoke to fire. And we're going to go here to the fuel and we're going to change that value to 2.1. That's just a value that I found works really well. And next we want to go down to the following thing. That's going to be the um, flow source here. We're going to take the surface emission and let's change that to a value of 1. So bringing it down. And now with that done, let's minimize it. And let's go down to the next option here, which is going to be texture. So let's click on that. Click on the drop down so we can come down here. And we just need to come over here to the texture properties. We're going to go new texture. Let's change it to cloud and we're just going to scroll down to the colors and let's take this contrast, bump it up to eight. And then we're going to go here to the size and make it 0.09 and we're going to hit enter. Now we've got this nice fine kind of um, texture here. So let's go back over to our physics tab and then back under the texture here. We're just going to go to the texture and now select that texture we've created. Feel free to give the texture a name if you want. Um, not really that important but you kind of get the idea. So that's everything done with this sphere for now. Let's grab our actual domain here and let's start by going down to the cache and the type here, instead of replay, we want to go to modular and then we want to go up and enable adaptive domain. That's going to make things a lot more efficient for us with the simulation. And then we're going to go up to this one here. This is a very important thing here. Currently it's set to 32. And this is essentially the resolution of the, sub, the subdivision resolution. So the higher you set this, you're going to get a much more finer, higher detail simulation. But it's going to come at a much higher computational cost. So um, I found that one of the highest settings you can go to on most computers where you get a relatively good result without compromising too much in performance is about 128. In fact, we're working with multiples of two. So 32 times two is going to be 64 and 64 times two is going to be 128 so try not to go something like 130 right we always want to work in multiples of two when we're doing the subdivision here so 128 is going to be our go-to number you could go higher you could double that if you have a higher end pc go to 256 for this purpose i'm going to stay at 128. now there are some things here that are more to do with aesthetics we're going to go down to the actual fire so let's go down under here under gas go to fire and the reaction speed here is up to you i'm going to go ahead slow things down a little bit by going to 0.5 and i'm also going to bring down the vorticity so it's not as uh it doesn't go as crazy so i'll just bring that down to 0.12 and that's about it what we can do from here is go over to our cache and we can click on this folder i'm going to just go to maybe my desktop and i'm just going to create a new folder by right clicking and clicking new folder and I'll call it something like cache tutorial, call yours whatever you want. And I'm going to go ahead, click on that cache tutorial, accept that folder, go accept again. So now I can see I have a destination here, cache tutorial. And for my purposes here, I'm just going to set it to 130 
with the cache. So that's just the amount of frames it's gonna actually cache our simulation. And for that matter, I'm also gonna to go to my end frame value here and make that 130, just to kind of match with that. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna have 130 frames where this is gonna get cached out. Okay, so now we have all of the dominoes in place. Make sure to save. Let's go up now to the top, over here where our settings are, and you're gonna see something here called bake data. And this might take a little bit of time, but it shouldn't be too bad if you have a you know mid-range kind of computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click bake data. And in a few minutes, mine has now done doing the cache. So I can now drag through here and I can see this is a nice looking simulation. How cool is that? So now we have that done. Let's actually render this out. So we need to set up some materials first. That's really simple. So let's go to our render engine first over here at the top. We're going to change it to cycles. If you do have a GPU, I recommend you enable that and use it. And then under the render settings here, I think a max sample of even 20 should be fine. Now, I know that sounds really low, but with denoising enabled, you should get a relatively okay result. And I feel like um, with the volumetrics here, it's better to not go too high unless you want to wait a really long time. I wouldn't recommend going any higher than 50 for this. Um, so I'm just going to keep it at 20. So now let's, with our um, domain actually selected, we're going to go over to our shading workspace. And we see here, it's already created this smoke domain material for us. So what we're going to do is we need to, first of all, establish an attribute here. So let's go shift a search and let's type an attribute input attribute. And let's come here and name it fire. I guess we've named the name of the attribute here fire. And then we're going to take the factor and we're going to connect that to the emission strength over here. And to be able to have more control of that, we're going to go shift a search and get a color ramp. Grab it over here, place it on this cable. And so we can see what we're doing. Let's just go Z and go rendered. And let's drag this value in here. Let's drag our white value down and let's create another um, tag here, drag it up and let's just make this one darker. And for now, I'm just gonna go to my world as well and just change the environment color to black. And at the moment, even though we're in rendered mode, we can't see anything. I think I've made a mistake here. We should come here to the name and actually change it to heat. Okay, that's the correct attribute here. I always get mixed up. So it's not fire. We're looking for the attribute H-E-A-T. So that's heat. And now you can see our fire is looking absolutely sick. It kind of has like this kind of like ghostly effect. Um, so how do we actually add color to this? That's really fun. So let's just move this up. Let's go shift A, search, get another color ramp. Let's take the color this time, plug it into the factor and then take the color and plug it into the color here at the top. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this one over here, drag it up and let's change that to a nice orange. Let's grab this one here, bring it down. Let's make that kind of like a yellowish kind of color as well. And let's just take our density here, set it down to zero. And I made another mistake because I'm so used to working with the principal BSDF. We actually wanna take this and plug it into the emission color. That's it, okay? So I know I put it into the color here at first, but we're putting it into the emission color here because we're actually working with an attribute here. And now you have a way of actually controlling the temperature, um, the color here. So let's just grab this one, for example, we can kind of make it kind of green. Um, yeah, that's how easy it is to kind of create a cool looking fire. I'll just change this back to kind of like a yellow, yellowy orange. Now, if you want to make this look brighter, all you have to do is go shift a search and get a math, grab a math node, place it on here. And then just go ahead and multiply a value. And in Blender, when we multiply a value, it's gonna go bigger. So if we maybe make this something like seven, we're gonna get a nice bright fire. Um, I might just, yeah, I'll stick to seven. So there we have it. That is our fire material. So let's now go over to our layout. Let's go into our front view and go Shift A, add in a camera. I'm just gonna move it back like so. And I might just actually go to my output here and change this to 800 at the top. Leave it at um, 1080 at the bottom. And I'm just gonna move it up, zoom in a little bit. And now let's just go ahead and find somewhere that we like. And let's just go render and render the image. And there we have it. This is our rendered flame here. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you wanna render this out as a final animation, simply go over to your output, go down here to the output folder, select somewhere like your desktop, change the file format to FFmpeg video, and under the encoding, just change the container to MP4. Make sure to save, and then you can just go render and render the animation, and it'll render out the full 130 frames to your selected destination over here. 
my case, that'll be the desktop. So um, I've already done that previously. Um, so I'm gonna show you what my result was. Um, this was it right here. Um, so yeah, that is how easy it is to get realistic fire in Blender without going too crazy with pushing your computer. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time for another one.